Motherhood. Motherhood is the art of gentle guidance, teaching our children not only how to navigate the world, but also how to find their path. Motherhood is not just about giving birth. It's about giving and nurturing the future generation with wisdom and love. The greatest gift a mother can give her child is not just her love, but her guidance, shaping them into the best version of themselves. These are quotes from unknown. But today I am here talking about motherhood. I have uh, two girls, going to be 13 and going to be 17 years old. So I'm at this age, I'm at the age where they're, they're teenagers and I am learning about, um, it's just a different area I am in my life. I love being a mother, like mother, honestly, when I was in high school, I knew I wanted to have kids. I don't know if that's what everybody was thinking, but for me, deep down, like I knew I wanted to be a mother. I remember being a senior in high school and just thinking like, oh, I know I'm going to have kids. And I had kids when I was 23, 24. So I had both my kids before um, I was 30. And now that I'm older, my kids are a teenager and I see a lot of my friends now in the 40s having kids now. And there's nothing wrong with that because while I was in my 20s having kids, I remember seeing all my friends out in college, having fun, parties at the club. And a part of me was like, kind of, you know, like, oh shit, that's what they're doing. And for me, it was like, I'm, I'm a mother, <laughs> you know, with little ones. But everybody's destiny is all different. My destiny or my, where, what, for me, it was having kids older. And then now that they're older, I'm able to kind of figure out what I want to do now. Because I knew that in my 20s, I had no idea what I wanted to do. You know, I went to college um, and I went to college and for a computer business administration and then technology that I had, I did not like. I interned at a office at a medical office uh, one time and we're behind the desk and we had to do office work behind a computer. I did not like that. I was so bored being stuck in this, you know, office with other people. Like that was just not me. I only lasted one day and um, I, I stopped that intern. And uh, when I went back to the college that I went to, uh, me and my cousin, we both stopped and we got in trouble because you know, we made the school look bad because we quit without, you know, letting anyone know. Um, but that was when I was like, life is always telling you what you like or what you don't like. If you listen to it for me, I knew in that moment when I was behind the desk, uh, working behind the, the screen, like this was not me. I wanted to be like outside doing something else, you know? And so for me, I had to discover and learn about myself. So after that, I was like, oh, I want to go to beauty school, right? So I went to beauty school and I met the most amazing, you know, amazing friends, so much drama. I was like not involved with the drama. I was like, mm, I'm stepping back. I'll watch you guys do your drama thing or whatnot. But it was such a cool experience. You know, I didn't, what I got out of that was uh, the skills. I still cut my family's hair. And I save so much money from that. <laughs> I do my own nails. I do, I do a lot of things that I learned from beauty school. But, but okay, I got to think again. Where am I going? Okay, so all of us, we all have different paths. I did not know what I wanted to do when I was younger or in my 20s. So um, as life goes on, like I, for me, first and foremost was being a mom. I was a young mother. Um, in my twenties, you know, everybody out there, you know, starting their careers. I see my friends starting their careers, doing, doing their thing. 
And, um, but I chose a different path and it's okay. We all have different paths and it's, we're all going, you know, honestly, we're all walking the same way. We're all going home, you know, we're all leading the same way. Now that I'm in my forties and my kids are older, it's like, how do we teach them and raise them before they are gone? Honestly, I only have a few more years with my, my oldest one before she's out of the house. You know, I don't know where she's going to go to, but, and my younger one is 13. So I have, you know, five, five more, five, six more years with her. And I'm going to take that. I'm going to fucking love it. I'm going to enjoy the moment and be with them. Cause first and foremost, being a mom is like, I love being a mom. I it makes me want to cry. Because the love, the love that we have for our kids is, we, can, we cannot, like words doesn't describe the love we have for our kids. I know. But now that we are raising our kids, right? We, how are we guiding them to this life that, uh, that's ahead for them. So last night, or actually this morning, um, or last night I did the Oracle cards, right? And doing the Oracle cards, I was shuffling it and one dropped. And usually when one pops out or drops, like that, that card is for you. And that card, when I picked it up, it said, listen, right? It told me to listen, to quiet my mind and to just listen. So, so I'm like, okay, listen, you know, silence, meditation. Okay. I got it. So early in the morning when I woke up, I had this message that came to me. It was like a download, you know, I was reading and this download, I did not, I should have like recorded myself or write it down in that moment, but I didn't. So I kind of forgot, but I kind of still remember, but this message is, it goes like this. We have our kids right now. We are guiding them as parents. And for me, we're all different. We raise our kids all differently and there's no wrong or right way is just how you are raised. For me, raising my daughters is, is hard when you see them go, struggle through, through things. Like I want to be, you know, save them, save them, save them. But sometimes I have to step back and they have to learn their lessons because they have to grow through, you know, teenage years of friendship and, and, and heartbreak and bully and all that. Like, I'm there to guide them, but they have to learn through their struggles too, because if we go and save them all the time, how are they going to learn like the wisdom and, and, and the knowledge to move on into the future? It's hard when you see your, your kids struggling with something. You know, it's hard when is really challenging at, at times. And sometimes it's, it's beautiful. So back to my little download that I got is how do we guide our children to the path? My oldest one is about to be, um, going into college or university, but I, I, you know, I want to let her know that that is not the only way going through a university. Cool. You want to go? Cool. You want to take a year off and go travel? Cool. Do that. Take a year off and go travel. If you, uh, um, uh, want to do something else, Let's do that. I'll find you a mentor. Let's find a mentor together 
and let the mentor guide you in the direction that you want to go to. But one thing I want them to, I always teach them is listen to your gut, listen to your intuition because your intuition, your gut is gonna guide you. If you go somewhere and you're feeling like, like you, your gut, like feels like weird or off, like listen to that. And I love it because my, my, my daughter, you know, she uh, went, to, went to school one day and somebody was passing out uh, cookies that was laced with marijuana. And for her, my daughter, she said, I just didn't, something didn't feel right. So she didn't eat that cookie. But uh, the poor sixth graders and seventh graders ate it and they all had to go home. Uh, but it was just like the intuition when my daughter told me, she's like, yeah, I just didn't feel right. Like something was off. It's like, oh, I'm glad you listened to that. So teaching my daughters to growing up, is like instincts, trust your feelings in here, know who you are. <sighs> the confidence that us parents give, give to our kids is you don't talk like, yeah, I talk maybe some, but you know what it is, is you have to model what you want them to see. You know, at my household, we model, like we work out, we, we try, we try our best to eat, you know, as healthy as we can. Um, we just do things that is, um, that help us grow and evolve. And for them, like my, I don't talk about motherhood much, but we are the example for our kids. They see us do something, they're going to do it too. You know, if they see us drinking all the time, they have two choices. They might be seeing their parents getting drunk all the time. They might like it. They might do the same or they might see it and be like, you know what? I don't want to do this. I'm going to do something else. And also raising, as for me, I'm raising my daughter to learn to, to speak, to speak up for herself. Um, I'm proud of my daughter because on her eighth grade, eighth grade graduation speak, like oh, she was a great speaker, uh, like confidence and funny. And I was just like, <laughs> public speaking, it's, it's going to carry over into whatever she, she does. Right. And, and for me, for, uh, and to teach my kids about, um, you know, living, living a healthy lifestyle, you know, like education, um, telling them that there's not, on, there's not only one way of life. There's plenty of different ways of life that you can go to. You know, you don't have, you don't have to go to college. I'm not pressuring you to go to college, but if you want to go, if you don't, it's fine. You want to go to Travel the world, go see the world, go discover who you are. Because in life, growing up, like you don't know what you want to do when you get out of high school. Nobody does. So we are on a journey of trying to find our own path, our own ways. You know, I'm 40 and I'm 30. I just found mine, you know? <laughs> and also like teaching them about, you know, um, money teaching about like money like be responsible with your money and not just like spin 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 you know we teach our kids about investment like uh uh robert kioski um has this game called um cash flow uh get out of the rat race <laughs> it says but it's playing games with them to let them learn to understand about how money works what can you do when, uh, uh, about different investments about, you know, doing house, like it's gives you a different, uh, uh, um, it's just learning about money and, um, shit. I, I don't know. I haven't played this in a while about investments. Oh. It's also learning to love our kids where they are at. And sometimes um, 
in this process of motherhood is sometimes our own stuff gets in our, in our way and we can't see our kids clearly. That's why I really believe that we have to do the inner work because sometimes you project things that happen to you on your kids and your kids has nothing to do with it. Our kids are the greatest teacher. My kids is the greatest teacher because whatever is annoying, whatever they do that's annoying me when I was, uh, uh, when they were younger, like I had a, I had a, it, it wasn't them. It was me. I had a, I had a parent myself. I have to parent myself. Sometimes we, we have all this projection from our, our, our own mothers and we don't see it and we put it back, we put it on our kids. Dude, our kids are so, so free spirit. They're just beautiful souls coming in. And when we come in this world, we, this world, this world is hard, right? Try to program us with what the society wants us to think. How can we help our kids to, to question things, to, to see both sides, to have the love and understanding and the compassionate? It's hard. Trust me. You know, like, I don't know. I don't know. You know, once my kids started going to, um, like junior high, high school, you know, I wasn't mama no more. I was bra. My name is bra now. Bra, bra, bra. <laughs> it was bra, bra. So as learning about like parenthood, I don't know. I can go on. There's I read books about it. I I had to heal my own wounds because what we don't heal, we pass on to our kids. And I know there's some stuff that I pass on to my kids. And there's some stuff that was passed on to me. And I realized I was like, I, I don't like that. Like I'm not gonna pass that on to my kids. How can I raise? Uh, our, you know, our kids to be like the best version of themselves. How can we teach our kids to have the, the resilience? How can we teach them to know themselves? To know themselves. Because if they don't know who they are, this fucking world, this fucking society will tell you who you are or who you want to be. This society out here, this fucking world is so fucking noisy. So trying to fucking target our kids and trying to program them. But it's up to us. It's up to us to teach our kids. What values do you want to teach your kids? What do you want to teach your kids before they go up and be responsible adults in the future? If you're going to be, if you're going to be passing on real estates and, and, and investments to your kids, do they understand about real estate? Do they understand about uh, investments? Cause some people have millions of dollars and they pass their, their, their things on to their kids. And when their kids get it, they don't know what to do. And it just crumbles and it falls. So is the legacy. We have to educate our children. If they're going to be taking over what we have, they need to also learn about money, about investment, about the economy, about what's going on, about what to do. I'm so grateful and lucky. I have everything and even more than I need. Like I have everything. I don't, everything is all within us. We all have everything. (sighs) 
So do they understand that they are powerful, loved, and valued? Yeah. Yeah. Now that, you know, they're at the age from, for me, it's like they're, they're teenagers now. You know, I have like maybe like a year or two with my oldest one and I treasure like, oh, just thinking about that. It's like, oh. you know, if I want to see more of them, I got to figure out some kind of business that I can, uh, car up, like, uh, yeah. collab with my daughter <laughs> if I want to see more of them <laughs> and also it's, it's the communication because growing up you know my daughter's like you yell a lot I was like I yell a lot I was like yeah you yell a lot I'm like you know it was my tone of the voice and I'm I've been working on it sometimes unconsciously it just comes out kind of like rude and mean but I was like oh no I, I don't mean to I don't mean to be rude and mean it just unconsciously comes out that way but it's how can we mold our kid our children's before they they go off in this real world how can we teach them to that the love is within here that you have you have everything you need in here how can they have a strong foundation so when they walk out, out, out into the, this world, they're not, you know, easy victims. Speak up. Stand for what you believe in. <sighs> Me too with Japanese accent. <laughs> That's the way we were spoken to when we were younger. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just here because I had this message in the middle of the night. We are just guiding our kids to, to their own journey and reminding them that mama, papa, you, your sister, your brother, we all have our own journey and our own path to walk in. And whatever that path may be. And if you don't know your path, follow the excitement. Excitement. What is exciting most to you right now? Do you want to do this? Which, you know, do you want to go be a doctor? Is that exciting to you? Do that. If you want to travel and that's exciting to you, do that. You, sh you shouldn't know what you want to do because life is always unfolding in front of us. And to me, it's teaching my kids, follow your highest excitement. Life is always guiding you to where you're supposed to be. Our own soul's evolution. Yes, we brought our kids into this world, but they're not ours. They're not, you know, like ours. They're their own souls, their own beings. My kids chose me to be their parent. Fuck. <laughs> they chose me and I'm so grateful that they chose me to be their mom. <sighs> they taught me a lot. They taught me so much. <sighs> Patience. Understanding love teaches you <laughs> what the fuck you need to heal yourself <laughs> it teaches you the chaos that's going on within you what is it that's within you that you need to reparent yourself <sighs> oh <laughs> You know, and just letting, you know, and, and my daughter, you know, the oldest one is such a beautiful, kind soul. Her exterior might be like jokes around quite a bit. 
but they can come to us. They can come to me and talk about alcohol. They can talk about weed. They can talk about whatever, you know, like they don't talk about like, like the SEX part yet, but you know, they, they're, they're not afraid to come and, and, and talk to us, you know, cause they know that I'm, I'm not, I'm open. So it's how can we, you know, have a relationship with our kids where they feel safe to tell you things, you know, and also to learn about boundaries, especially my daughters, you know, they have their, their, their sisters. Oh, there's balloon popping up. I, I don't know how the balloons are popping up because um, you're safe and open. Yes, that's the way it should be because you make them feel safe. Yeah. And but this took work because. <laughs> it takes work. <laughs> I did. I wasn't born as like, you know, like um, um, oh, amazing mother, you know, it's like, oh, shit, I had to look at myself. When you are a parent, you have to look at yourself. You have to look at what you need to heal. If you don't do that, you project it onto them. Your fears, your insecurities onto them. And they were born perfect. They were born just beautiful light souls. (sighs) We hold the compass that guides our children to their true north. Yeah. So do you guys have uh, any questions about motherhood? (sighs) I love being a mother. It's challenging. It's hard work. But just knowing that we are guiding our kids to be the best version of themselves. (sighs) Because I know that if I can model to them that I am here, mama. I remember my youngest daughter telling me, mama, why do you always get to travel? I want to travel too. She won't, she, <laughs> she see me traveling all, all over and she wants to travel too. And that conversation on the bed, it, that conversation that I had with her, She's probably 11 years old at that time. I was like, the reason why mama is traveling and doing this thing is because I'm trying to help to build a better future. I'm trying to help other people heal. I'm trying to be a guide to make this world a better place. That's why mama travel. And in that moment of vulnerability where she's seen me, she understood. She felt that. Because their journey of the new life, the the new generation, the younger generation, it's going to be... They're the new light that's going to be molding the future, helping, helping out in this future, wherever this world takes us to. I don't know where this role is going to uh, lead to, but to know that we are molding and guiding our kids, let them know that there's so much in this role. I am an aunt. I teach them about the Lord. Yeah. Having faith is very important. Yeah. Uh, I'm on an IG live, but what's up? What's up? Are you hungry? Okay. I'll, I'll give me like five minutes. That is my cue. My kids are sick home today. So I made them some, uh, uh, Cambodian, uh, rice porridge and I'm about to um, um, fry up some, uh, uh, air fry some uh, um, Cambodian dried fish to eat with porridge. Because it's, I don't know, when you're sick, we like to eat porridge. But anyways, thank you guys for um, uh, 
joining me. Oh, let me see what, yeah, motherhood is calling. Mother, motherhood, motherhood is the school of greatness. What's your biggest lesson that you will carry in your heart forever? The love. That's, that's a very great question, Alma. The love. The love that you don't know that you had within you to give to another person. <laughs> like, my heart is full. Like, oh, my heart is full. But I, I got to go now since I got to go make some porridge. So, um, thank you guys for tuning in. I love you. Um, let's raise and guide our kids to become the best version of themselves, educate them. So when they step into this real world, that they're just strong, they have a strong foundation and that, you know, they can't be brainwashed by, you know, this world, this world. How can they know themselves but have this heart that's open, that's able to be love and be compassionate and be kind? I'm out. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in.